How's it going, ladies and princes? I'm Bobby Six Killer, and welcome to our 2000 subscriber special. Now, uh, we had a tie in the voting. We had a voting of Among Us, uh, Q&A, or my top 10 game video games of all time. We had a tie between Among Us with subs and top 10 video games of all time. Um, wait a moment. I think we go. Um, we did Among Us with subs already this morning. Um, so I sat down to write my top 10 video games of all time. Also, I said I'd do it in a banana suit. Hence, uh, move back a bit. Hence the banana suit. It's full body. Uh, courtesy of Pom Pom Gaming. Or Pom Pom Games. It's pretty hard to wear a headset under though, honestly. Um, so I read out my list of my top 10 games of all time. I don't know how we're going to do this. I'm just going to do it off the cuff, I suppose. And tell you what I think about it. Uh, instead of rating them from 1 to 10 or something like that, I'm just going to do it in year order from oldest game to newest game. I think that makes the most sense, and instead of just doing franchises, I'll do individual games from that franchise. So my favourite game from that franchise, which might be a little bit controversial. Just saying. Just... It's personal opinion here. Personal... Op my personal opinion from my... Uh, from the games I have played. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers and the huge uh, influx of views and, and subscribers we've had in the last month or so. It's been absolutely unreal. We gained over 100 subscribers in October, which is far more than we've ever gotten in a single month, ever. So thank you so much to all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers, all the people that have been here for ages, all of you on Discord, all of your patrons. Uh, if you're not on Discord and you want to, you know, become a member of the Discord community and have a chat, jump on in. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, there's links to Patreon in the description. There's links to the new store we just opened, uh, the new creator store where you can buy games, um, where we receive a, a cut, you know. There's some good deals on there at times. Um, they're still just uh, getting started, but we're going to add more as we go. Just thank you so much for getting us to where we are right now. I never thought we'd get this far, honestly. Uh, let's hope uh, 2021 is as good a year for this. I mean, it hasn't been a great year this year, but for the channel it's been really, really good. And I appreciate that. It's given me something to focus my attention on uh, when everything else was going awry. You know? It's very hot. I'm going red. Very hot. It's coming into summer here and the banana suit is hot as fuck. <laughs> so anyway, thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Now, let's jump in to the first game, which is going to be a first-person RPG or immersive sim from the year 2000, Deus Ex. Um, any of you PC gamers out there already know what Deus Ex is, I'm sure. I'm talking the original Deus Ex from 2000. It was absolutely mind-blowing at the time. You might look at it now and it looks like absolute shit. It looks like diarrhea and crusted cardboard cutouts all stuck together. People's faces barely move in that game. There's no, like, the eyes and mouth and <laughs> the characters are all painted on. But at the time, in 2000, it was fucking state of the art. It was unreal. You could go around and break all the couches. And you could walk through UNACO headquarters where you start and break the couches with a crowbar. And they would splinter into bits. And it was absolutely... I'd never seen anything like it at the time. It was absolutely unreal. The way you could um, go into missions and achieve them in a multitude of ways. I've never seen anything like that. In the year 2000, that was unheard of, and even now it's pretty uncommon, to be fair, isn't it? <laughs> the story was like every <laughs> every conspiracy theory rolled into one game. It was fucking unreal. It was quite a ride, man. It had multiple endings, which was unreal at the time as well. Like, I had seen a couple of games earlier than that that had multiple endings, but really, like, the endings were hugely different, you know? Hugely different. I mean, it's clunky as shit. It's the one of the. It's probably the game, or one of the games. The next one too. One of the games I would love most of all to see a remaster with less clunky, sort of more modern take on it. Like, keep it as is, but you know, make it a bit more fluid, make it less clunky. The animations look like shit now. The graphics look like shit. You could definitely improve on all of that, and it would be amazing. Like, uh, Human Revolution the reboot one that Square Enix did. That was my next favourite, honestly, out of all the Deus Ex, I mean there's four Deus Ex games if you don't count the fall, which nobody does because it's an Android game. Um, Human Revolution was really good. Um, Mankind Divided I was not hot on, but Human Revolution was, was 
really good. It wasn't anywhere near as good as the original, though. That's it. That's all I want to talk about. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Moving on to the next one. The year 2002. Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Easily my favorite Elder Scrolls game ever. No question. Easily. It is huge and vast and explorative and like it doesn't have the mini maps compass system where it points you where to go all the time when you get quests it tells you in the journal it gives you a short description and you have to use the description to find where you need to go to do the next thing and you had to explore the map and learn where everything was and like apparently oblivion and skyrim are much bigger games but they don't feel bigger because of the way you get around tomorrow and the way you have to map the place in your head the fact that and that's coming from me someone who can't map or navigate for shit you can't fast travel anywhere like there's this there's, sh there's mage guild fast travel and there's silt strata fast travel and there's boat fast travel but that's it and there's there's not a lot of opportunity for fast travel so pretty much if you have to go somewhere you have to walk and you have to follow the directions in your journal which can be frustrating at times but it made it for a much more rewarding experience and so there was so much hidden stuff to find there was so much tucked away every every dungeon every uh, cave every daedric ruin or whatever would provide you some special little thing some little secret that you wouldn't know otherwise and the place like it was so hard to f because nothing was mapped out apart from like you have to use a paper map sometimes just to pinpoint where things were i've seen things in that game and i've been like oh this is amazing but i've never been able to find it again i've played 700 hour games of it I've played over a thousand hours, easy, in Morrowind, in, in its entirety. I've owned four copies of it, two on the Xbox original, and uh, two on PC, the normal version and then the gold edition on both. And I just found it randomly in a bargain bin box for the Xbox, and it was buggy as fuck, just like all, all Bethesda games. <laughs> Even on the Xbox, it used to crash like nobody's business. The more a map you uncovered, the buggier it was. But it was just so much fun so much fun so much to explore it's one of the reasons i love exploration games and it's something you just don't see that much anymore again it's another one of those games that's very clunky it's very dated it's very ugly um they could really really use a remaster i remember when they uh released the trailer for the uh morrowind expansion for uh, elder scrolls online which is not a game i've really I, I played the beta when that came out but i wasn't into it at all but the look of Elder of the Morrowind expansion for it was like, oh yes, this is exactly what we need for a for a reboot. This is yeah, this that would be the number one game I'd want to reboot for, or a, a remake, a remaster, with nice graphics, and and sort of like Skyrim's combat system, because um, it's got a terrible combat system. <laughs> it's very very dated. But yeah, that's it for that one. So moving on. Uh, to 2004 my next pick is going to be yet another rpg and that is dragon's quest 8 on the ps2 um dragon's quest i it was one of the earlier jrpgs I, I played a few of the original final fantasy games and i did enjoy them i enjoyed final fantasy 8 especially but um dragon's quest 8 blew me away as also as a fan of dragon ball as most of you no, the Dragon's Quest 8's characters and monsters are all designed by Akira Toriyama, the drawer of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, um, Dragon Ball Super. I absolutely loved the uh, the character designs. They're sort of cutesy, but I don't know. There was like the the Dual Magus, the original boss, was so sinister. Even though everything was very cartoony, very cutesy, but sort of sinister as well. It's it introduced some mechanics I'd never seen in games before, like like. Uh, at the time, weak enemies running away from you if you ran into them and you were too strong. Or uh, if you ran into a group of enemies, like uh, five slimes, I think it was five. It's irrelevant. The point is, they sometimes they'd fuse together into a king slime, which was a harder challenge. Or there were these robot parts that were individual monsters, but they could fuse together into a full-size robot that was absolutely terrifying to fight. The parts were fine on their own, but when they fused together, they were unbelievably scary and the game had so like the story it just kept going and it was like i think dragon's quest 11 but more grand more epic and every, you fight dual magus as the final boss the final boss and then it just there's a new boss and a new boss and it just keeps going and going and going and even after you beat the game you've got um your characters 
sort of heritage that you have to deal with because he's part you find out he's part dragon spoilers um and you go to where he comes from the dragon place and you have to fight the dragons and they were super duper strong and all the different weapons you could pick like a lot of the every character could specialize in certain weapons and a lot of them were unique weapons you didn't see in in, in games that much like uh jessica's whip or um yangus's scythe or oh your main character's boomerang which was really cool and the and the alchemy pot where you could fuse items together to make new weapons and armor and uh, just blew me away it blew me away there was again it was another game with a lot of exploration with secrets hidden around like the puff puff cave if you played it you know what that is i mean everyone knows what puff puff is if you if you played uh, any dragon quest game right um but <laughs> Oh, oh, and the uh, the monster fighting thing, which spawned off its own um, sub games, the Dragon Quest Monsters games, where you could collect uh, individual monsters like Pokemon and fight them in teams of three against other teams in this arena. Unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable! It was so good, and it's another game that I would wish they would. It doesn't even need a remaster; it just needs uh, it just needs a, like an HD update, you know, because it's. It's uh, cell shaded, right? So it, they are cell shaded. Get cell shaded games hold up. They look good. Once you blow them up, they just still look good. I'd love to see. All they did was release a fucking phone version. You know how pissed I was at that? Pissed. <laughs> a phone version. <sighs> anyway, that's that. Moving on. All right, we got another one from 2004. This one, if anyone, any of you that have been here a long time, are not going to be surprised by this one probably, but. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines uh, Which is why I'm so excited for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines too. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines was another game that really blew me away. It was it kind of harkened back to Morrowind in the way that the uh, In the way that the level up system worked sort of it felt that same kind of way But at the same time it was it was modern it was dark and it was gritty and it was uh, infinitely replayable because of the the bloodlines, the bloodlines referring to the different types of vampire you could play as when you start, which could change the gameplay quite dramatically in the way you approached it. Again, it was like Deus Ex in that you could approach um, all the quests in your own way and you could even bypass some depending on how you performed, like you could uh, trick their minds and convince them to do what you want or you could make them go mad or you could boil their blood inside their body until they die or you could turn into this werewolf vampire hybrid and tear the shit out of them or all of this kind of stuff it was really really amazing uh, the, the latter part of the game sort of fell off but the first half of the game is so so solid what what is there is absolutely incredible and, and again i believe it has multiple endings from what i understand though i have never seen more than one ending i un correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but i believe there are multiple endings the characters that you meet like uh janine and and uh the lady that got turned into a vampire by the the, the thin bloods and the thin bloods you meet on the beach and and Le prince lacroix the prick <laughs> oh it's just got a, a a really good story a really good it's got really good character development more than the good story i would say and and a really like it's it's like deus ex and it's like how you want to approach the situation but more so like Take that, but expand it ten times, and you could really do what you wanted to do. You could really approach things your own way. Not just, am I going to go in guns blazing or am I going to stealth? Way more than that. You know, you could be a Nosferatu and find the secret sewer entrances into the building that you need to be in, or you can be a Gangrel and tear them up, or you can be a, a, a Tremere and blood magic them, or you can be a true and change their convince their minds and oh, really really amazing i cannot wait we are going to be playing the second one on the channel when it comes out by the way sorry i get very excited about these things <laughs> but that's why you're here isn't it to see what i actually give a shit about all right next we're going to the next one okay 2005 now this one's a little bit different because it's not strictly an rpg it's still kind of though uh shadow of the colossus it's shadow of the colossus um, obviously I put in, we've had three releases of Shadow of the Colossus. This one is the PS2, the original, uh, which is where I played it the first time. 
again, it's one of those games that really did something nothing else has ever done. There's no, there's no faff. There's no, you know, it's like 16 bosses. Uh, one after, it's like kind of like a boss rush game, except half the game is sort of finding the boss, the sword, and you know, and you kind of bond with your horse and you bond with your character and it's very morally grey every time you come back and every time you kill one of the the colossi and the statue just gets destroyed and you think to yourself am I doing the right thing am I doing something bad right now like I'm trying to help this girl right or use our love or whatever but what is the cost you know what I mean at the end of the day what is that going to cost us and the the fights are so epic and every single one is so unique every single fight is you have to find the specific way of fighting them it's kind of like a the zelda boss where they all have their own specific weakness and you have to fight them a specific way it's like that but far more extreme you know where it's like a str con this massive struggle for survival where you're like combating you know you're this tiny thing this tiny little like even by people standards you're a little little person fighting these massive fucking things climbing up them especially the, the final one which is absolutely enormous and you're climbing it all bloody day trying to get in and killing it in its different weak points again it has it is a great great story that's kind of ambiguous uh, around the around the ending and i don't know it really resonated with me even though there was i don't know what it was because it's, again this not only has there never been anything like it, but there's never been anything since where, at least I don't know, you can tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, but, you know, where there's <clears throat> there's nothing between you and the Colossus. It's just you trekking through the fields, uh, holding up your light sword, looking for the Colossus. That's it. And so, like, there's nothing there. There's no mini enemies or there's no collectibles to pick up or any of that sort of shit. But somehow it's engaging, just traversing the landscape it's like dropping the one ring into mordor you know it's it's the journey you know ha huh, yeah anyway moving on next one's gonna be 2006 and this one's gonna be one of those controversial ones the next one's gonna be pokemon but it's not the pokemon game that most people pick most people say that the best generation is black and white gen 5 but my favorite game was actually Pokemon Diamond from the Diamond and Pearl Gen 4. I don't know specifically why that generation. They introduced a lot of my new favorite Pokemon in their generation, like Drapion and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know, I really like the world. I think it's the one that they introduced, Shiny Chaining. That's where they introduced it to make it a lot easier to do EV training. Correct me if I'm wrong about any of this stuff. It's been since <laughs> like the 2000s since I played Pokemon Diamond, but it, I know I clocked in over a thousand hours in it. Easy peasy. I love Pokemon, just in general. I've loved Pokemon since I was a kid, since I was like 11, when it first came out on TV. I've been obsessed with it. I used to tape it off the TV every day after school. I've played every generation that has ever come out, even when I was a kid. I bought a Nintendo 64 specifically to play Pokemon Snap and Stadium and Stadium 2. I bought a Wii specifically to play Pokemon Battle Revolution. I have been obsessed my whole life with Pokemon. So it's no surprise this is going to be here, and I had to pick one specific, so I picked Diamond because I spent the most time with it. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. You know I love Pokemon. We're going to be doing the Pokemon DLCs on Pokemon Sword and Shield very soon when I actually find room on the channel for it, but we're going to be getting into that, I promise. Um, but yeah, for now, Diamond and Pearl, I mean, Sword and Shield, I think, it left a bit of taste in my mouth, I'm not going to lie. It's the, as far as I'm concerned, the worst generation for its time that we've had. But maybe the DLCs have fixed that up a bit. I don't know. I guess we'll find out later. But yeah, Pokemon. Moving on to the next one. Uh, we're going to be moving to the 2010s this time. 2011. Dark Souls 1. The original Dark Souls. Not Demon Souls. I never played that. I never had a chance, unfortunately. But the first Dark Souls game, uh, like most people, I think, it took me quite a while to get into it. Yeah, I had friends. I had a friend at the time, like when it first sort of hit the shelves. I had a friend who was playing it on the PS3 and he showed me it and I was like, oh yeah, you know, eh, whatever, you know. And then I tried it myself and I was like, eh, you know, it's hard. And I remember the first time I ever really played it, after I got to Firelink Shrine, I, I couldn't figure out where to go next. I assumed the next place I had to go, because I'd never seen anything about it before, was the catacombs, right? A new player going to the catacombs straight from Firelink Shrine, where the skeletons are monstrously powerful compared to you. 
I just got flattened over and over and over and over until I gave up, right? But then uh, I found people that knew what to do, and they showed me where to go, you know, towards Undead Berg and all of that. But over time, I fell in love with it, and I have played it over and over again ever since. Again, it's one of those games full of exploration. It's one of those games full of do-it-your-way, sort of. It's got multiple endings, it's got, you know, you can... You can really craft your build to your specific play style. Like you, you can't be a stealth build or something, but you can you can you can do a magic build, you can do a dex build, you can do a strength build, you can go heavy armor, light armor, no armor. It's you know halberds. I personally like halberds. It's my favorite weapon. But you can go halberds, great swords, swords, shit. You can go whips, scythes. The actual range of weapons in the game is absolutely unbelievable. It really resonated with me. I really loved the way the story sort of emerges as you go non-linearly sort of as you discover the world as you discover the lore it's very deep it's a very deep game as far as lore goes there's a lot to it there's a lot to learn and there's uh, it's one of those games like a lot of anime really like like it was when i first watched akira the movie uh you have to watch it over and over and like dark souls you play it over and over again and you learn new things every time you play it there's always something new to know no matter how much you think you know about the game there's always something more to discover and that is amazing to me absolutely amazing because a lot of that secret stuff is hidden in plain sight you know it's just right there but you have to put two and two together you have to put context and dark souls I, i've played all the dark souls games uh well i played dark souls dark souls 2 dark souls 3 bloodborne uh, i didn't play demon souls i'll probably play the the remaster when it does come out but Somehow. I don't have a PlayStation that can play it, but hopefully a PC port. That'd be nice. That'd be lovely. Bloodborne's probably my next favourite, but it's not on my list. So we're going to move on to the next one. Next one is 2012. Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. This one is another one that might be controversial. I don't know. A lot of the Zero Escape people I've talked to, uh, many of you are Zero Escape people, uh, seem to prefer 999 over all of them and Poo Poo uh, Zero Time Dilemma. I'm not really of that mind. I really like VLR specifically. I, I like 999 and I like Z ZTD. I like them all. But uh, VLR for me really stood out as this deep and complex narrative that really, really like threw me for a loop over and over and over again as it twisted and turned in my mind and I tried to make heads or tails of what the fuck was going on. I was trying to figure out where I stood and who I can trust and who I can't trust and you can't fucking trust anyone but you're like I like this person but then you, you say oh I like that person so I trust them in the in in the voting game and then they fuck you over and then you're dead and then you're like fuck that person I'm not gonna trust him and by the end you don't trust anyone you know it's and and, and the, the puzzles are beautifully designed most of them are hard but not impossible they're hard but they're not gonna stump you for hours and hours and hours you know what I mean they're beautifully designed in a way that you have to really think about every puzzle you come across but not so much that it's frustrating you know it really walks that line of I don't know how it does it really because every person's different you know that's why puzzle design so hard I think because you have to craft your puzzles in a way that it's going to suit everyone and everyone's different everyone looks at things in a different way maybe Maybe I'm just predisposed to VLRs type puzzles. I don't know, maybe some people had lots of difficulty with it, maybe some people found it much easier than I did. I don't know, I consider myself a pretty average puzzle solver, personally. I do a lot of it on the channel, so you guys kind of know what I'm what I'm about. The characters are great, the story is amazing, and uh, carries on into uh, Zero Time Dilemma. It's, it's very long, but um, it doesn't feel very long. Like, it's, it's twice the length of 999 at least but it it never overstays its welcome either which is amazing for a game so dense with story and and text it's my favorite visual novel of all time hands down it's the only visual novel on this list what else can i say i mean you've seen the playthrough i love it i love it moving on 2015 undertale I knew I needed I needed some representation from the indie community on here because I mainly play indie games but when I think back I don't know like when you're looking at 2000s to 2010s where most of my games sort of sit or early 2010s at least indie wasn't really a thing you know indie sort of emerged in the 2010s like there, there was there were some examples of indie games before that but it was never really a 
a, a counter thing because AAA wasn't really AAA back then either. It was all very homogenous, especially when you're looking at the 90s and early 2000s. It was all there was no the budgets were never insanely high like they are now, but they were never like they never had like one man bands anymore. But you know when I mean AAA companies, if you're looking at fucking something like Sierra in the 90s making shit like Space Quest, they had like three man teams making those games they're triple a games with three people making them in three weeks or four weeks or something you know just belting them out one after the other undertale i think is probably my number one pick for indie game ever i i suppose because it it's an rpg which i love as you may have noticed almost every game on this list is either an rpg or a jrpg it's when it's like when people say how oh pixel horror games can't possibly scare me because they don't look real you know it has to be like super realistic to scare me so it looks real but it's not about whether it looks real it's about whether it's immersive and it doesn't have to look real to be immersive and undertale is the perfect example of that it's a game that is doesn't look real at all it's fully pixely cartoony and it is immersive as balls <laughs> like you really care about these characters and when things when bad things happen to them it genuinely emotionally is painful it's fucking unpleasant when bad things especially when you have to go through it as the bagger when you do the genocide run it is heartbreaking doing it you know it's absolutely heartbreaking and it's i don't know it's done so many things that no other game has ever thought to do like these days there's a lot more of that sort of it's much more commonplace to have like alternatives to killing and and the fourth wall breakages and the and the underlying metaphors and the underlying uh, narratives and and you know all that sort of stuff but when it came out there was not there was nothing really like it you know the only other game that i could think of which is on my short list um was stanley parable which had the same sort of underlying narrative you know um to it as a whole but you know, Undertale. Everybody knows Undertale is a great game, and I know I've heard a lot of people say that um, what ruins Undertale is its fans, but uh, whether it has shitty fans or not, can't detract from how good of a game it is, you know? It just, it really is. It's amazing. All right, last one now. Number 10, 2017. This is the newest one on the list. Yakuza 0. Probably no surprise there to anyone who's been around on the channel for a while as well. As you may have known, we have played Yakuza 0, uh, Kiwami, and Kiwami 2 on the channel. Uh, I've also played uh, 3 and 4 on the PlayStation 3. Never had the chance to play uh, 5 or 6 as of yet. I did play Dead Souls, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> Yakuza, out of all of the ones I've played, Yakuza 0, and this one is the non-controversial pick this time, Yakuza 0 is my favourite. Um, by quite a bit. I really like Kiwami 2 as well. Actually, I like them all. I really like them all. But Yakuza 0 really, really stood out as this epic journey. And it's, oh man, with Yakuza, it's like, the the, the, the main story is like this, this winding, tangling web of betrayals and gangsters and, <laughs> and things. And But then this, the side mission is this ridiculously juxtaposed, <laughs> side mission nonsense which actually really helped break it up because Yakuza 0 is in the main story is so emotional it's so emotionally draining like you love these characters and, and it's really emotionally draining so it's actually nice to go off and train a dominatrix and how to be a dominatrix properly in the side missions um, you know just for a bit of respite from the seriousness of it all <laughs> It's one of those few games that really mixes uh, seriousness and ridiculousness without destroying the tone of either. It's got its ridiculous parts and it's got its serious parts. And it's got Kiryu, the wonderful, wonderful Kiryu. And of course Majima, the unofficial mascot of the channel. Hi there Majima. That's it. That's it. Uh, that's why I'm so excited about uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon or Yakuza 7 or whatever. We're going to be playing that very shortly. But until then that is my top 10 games of all time uh, i can't imagine this list changing much uh for quite some time probably give it another 20 years and then we'll, we'll do the list again eh when i'm 50. <laughs>
most of these games is you I, I worked out an average by adding the years together and then dividing them my average uh age for the games that i like is 2009 which makes a lot of sense considering how old i was in 2009 i was in my in my in my twenties you know i was I had a lot more time and uh, you know, i didn't have any <laughs> any uh responsibilities and you know i just play i just went to work and and played video games and and that's what i enjoy doing that's what i do now <laughs> you know and and you know if this channel keeps doing as well as it's going to do shit maybe i can do both at once he is hoping he is hoping but that's it that is my top 10 games of all time let me know what your top 10 games are in the comments below please i would love to hear them because i feel like a lot of you guys are gonna have similar stories a lot of you are, are a similar age um so you probably have similar favorite games from your childhood and older as well but i'd love to hear about that and if i mean i i struggled over this writing this list for days because i was so concerned that i'd forgotten something and even now as i speak this completely off the cuff not script uh, i'm still not sure i haven't forgotten anything so you, if you put your list down below that will help me remember if i've forgotten anything and, and i'd love to know what you guys are into and maybe we can do some let's plays of some of these some of my favorites some of your favorites uh, in the future that would be awesome thank you so much for being here thank you so much for watching thank you for all the all the subscribers and views that we've had uh thank you for everything and let's hope i mean we've done this for four years now just over we broke we passed our four year anniversary um, september i think um let's hope we can do this for another four years eh? yeah sounds pretty good to me if you guys are down for it Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.